Intel was founded in 1968 and you joined in 1978. Right. And um, they were the leader in the semiconductor uh, uh, industry back then. So what can you tell us? Can, will you share with us your role and yeah. what you were doing at the company back yeah. then? So uh, I was the... I, I came to Intel out of business school. They actually, for the very first time, sent some interviewers to uh, business school, to Harvard Business School, see if anybody might be interested in joining Intel. And I said, this would be a fantastic place to start. It's, you know, Silicon Valley was the heart of technology and Intel was the heart of uh, of that technology group at that time. And I joined to be uh, involved in the marketing of microprocessors. And in 1978, we have to be, remember that microprocessors were not the business that was making money for Intel. It was DRAMs and EPROMs. Uh, but this was a new fledgling uh, area of uh, Intel. It had only been around really for four or five years. And uh, when I joined them, it was to, you know, to help them figure out how to market microprocessors. And I was fortunate three years later in 1981 when one of my products, the Intel 8088 was announced to be in the IBM PC. Wow, that, that is huge. Yes, it, so it was the first time really that microprocessors were generally acknowledged as being more than just toys for hobbyists, but actually could be the heart of a device that you would use every day in business. Extraordinary. How old were you back then when you, you hit the jackpot? That was 26. Well, 26 in, in 1978. And yeah. so I was uh, another 329. Wow. And uh, uh, in 1981, when the IBM PC was announced. How exciting. But, but people don't understand how small a community it was. Really? I'll give you another just kind of little yeah. anecdotal example of that. So when I was at the IBM about to head back to business school, I happened to talk to a colleague that, we, that I was working on with a project. And he said, oh, I might be interested in business school, too. I was thinking about making a change. We, and so a couple months later, he was actually accepted. We drove to, uh, to uh, Boston in the same U-Haul. And a couple of months later, I introduced him to another individual at the business school. The individual that drove with me was Ed Esber. The individual I introduced him to was Dan Feilstra. Dan Feilstra started Visicalc. Ed Esber, after business school, joined Dan, and VisiCalc was the first spreadsheet on the IBM PC. And a few years later, Ed left to become the CEO of DBase, which was the first database on personal computers. So there's three random individuals in Boston in a community that, that was probably hundreds of people in size at that time, not thousands, tens of thousands, millions. But it was a fun time to be involved because the technology was so revolutionary and, and it enabled such an unprecedented set of activities because of Moore's Law, the ability mm -hmm. for these devices to double in performance and go down by a factor two in price every couple of years.